Hello, Professor Bright here. Welcome back to the Sunless Sea. Last episode, we spent a good amount of time under the Z. Saw a lot of fun things that are a little bit uh, intriguing, to say the least. Especially Low Barnett. I really am curious what happens at the Bell Tower. But that will have to wait for now. We do have other business to attend to, specifically the getting the coffee to the surface. There was that little coffee shop in Vienna. Want to sell it to them because they are willing to pay me a lot of money for that. Before we leave, though, there is something I have never been able to do before, and I wish to actually, you know, do that. So, if I visit my study, our private sanctuary, the clock ticks, the gaslight wickers, shadows lie quiet, and we can create a serene aquarium. I've accumulated quite a few secrets. You know the secrets of this peculiar specimen. Construct an environment that will display it to best advantage. The process of creating the aquarium will increase your mirrors by 7, as high as 200. And the aquarium is an auxiliary item worth a further 4... Sorry, 7 mirrors. For a total of 14. Watch this ichthyd enigma traverse the tank. Its motions are subtle and elegant. They induce tranquility. Perhaps, too, they reveal divinatory truths. So yes, expensive in terms of, you know... I lost 100 echoes there, but I gained 7 mirrors and, if I am not much mistaken, yes, Serene Aquarium, Auxiliary, look how it glides like moonlight. And bam, mirrors at 91 already. Doing pretty good if you don't mind me saying. And I think it's time we made a quick trip to the surface to get our coffee gotten rid of. And then more exploration probably going to do some surface exploration. I kind of kind of need to find Polythreme, wherever it is now. Although, I mean, I could just explore more of the Untersea. And in fact, for the moment at least, I have no reason not to go under. So, let's go. And there we are, an abyss. A chasm gapes below your submarine, descending into unknown fathoms. Unlocked with abyssal rights, above an abyss four. You have four. I do? I mean, yeah, of course we explore the abyss. Deeper, your helmsman gives you a questioning look. Uh, was this a mistake? You say nothing, you are unaccustomed to repeating yourself. With a trembling hand, she steers your vessel down. You sink into the abyss like a coffin into a grave. Stony walls rise about you. Your vessel's light picks out beds of undulating anemones. Good luck. Excuse me? Shelves have been cut into the rock walls. Some are large enough to hold ancient waterlogged ships crusted with long dead barnacles. Others are smaller holding pairs of clay coffins and a smattering of grave goods, jugs and bowls. A true sailor will find the Z as comfortable as any bed, it is said. This right will increase your veils by 20, but decrease your hearts by 10. Succeed or fail, you will gain the right, but failure will increase your terror. Dive deeper. Succeed or fail, you will go deeper, but a failure will damage your hull. Something even further down in the darkness. I mean... Extra veils, I would like that, but... I don't know, let's give it a shot, why not? Something even further down in the darkness. Deeper still, your helmsman's response is unjustifiably foul-mouthed, but she assents. Your submarine's pinprick of light shines onto a cliffside, illuminating only a spot of a vast inverted cathedral, a fathomless church. Perform the rite of solace. Interesting. Perform the Ritual of Solace, a procession of statues lined the Z floor, facing away from the church. They carry coffins on their shoulders. The march ends at a precipice, descending into a further abyss. Performing the abyssal rituals in the correct order will lead to a discovery. Huh. Okay, I guess we ascend then. Rising with every meter climbed, you feel the probability of you meeting with an untimely death decline, from absolutely certain to just likely. I mean, we might as well rest in one of the graves. Why not? 
You don your diving gear. This is a stupid idea. You lie in an empty shelf cut from the stone. Your crew will watch over you in seven minute shifts. They'll have you out before 21. You close your eyes. The Z weighs heavy. It pulls you down. She lies next to you. The black hem of her skirt curls like clouds of ink. In the dark, you can just make out her pale lips. Her fingers stroke your hair. She speaks. You respond. She asks your name. She tells you her own. You awaken back on your submarine. The ship doctor holds your wrist in one hand and a stopwatch in the other. He shows you the face. Twenty minutes exactly. Gained twenty veils, lost ten hearts. And we've partaken in the rite of feasting. Yeah, interesting. Depart. We've seen what we came to see. You drift steadily up and out of the mall. Huh. Interesting. Is so... Question. Wither weed damage user your hull. Oh. Oh! Oh! Okay. So that's the thing. But now my question was, more or less... Who is that? Is that like, for lack of a better term, the spirit of the Z? I don't know who the lady in black is. So I'm very curious now. Hmm. Well, doesn't matter right now. We're going to make a quick stop over to Quaker's Haven. Yes, yes. Fires on the hillside. Once the simple fi oh right I forgot we have more of these to do. Once the simple fishing village was part of the London suburbs before London fell and the waters rushed in, smoke spirals from cottage chimneys. A lonely hill rises behind town, and a wandering parson he glances nervously back at the cock and magpie, but his handshake is strong. You look trustworthy. He seeks passage to the church of Low Barnet beneath the Z just outside London. His suit is well tailored for an itinerant preacher. His cufflinks wink with sapphires. Offer a passage for knowledge. People like to confide in Parsons. What can he confide in you? I'm partial to knowledge. Blessings, money. Not quite as uh, useful as knowledge. A small confession. Ah, he gives a knowing smile. You travel to learn as well as to trade, Captain. I myself am studying the religions of the Unterzi. By extracting the most admirable elements of each, I mean to construct a modern, superior faith. I understand the value, the spiritual value, of course, of hidden knowledge. Once on board, he insists you find a quiet cabin and whispers one of the secrets he's learned in your ears. Now, that is interesting. Hmm. Not exactly as profitable as I would like, but... There we are. Let's visit this little hilltop above town. There's not much wind on the Undersea, but Mutton Island suffers eerie gusts and buffets from an inexplicably local fragment of weather, and the air on the hilltop sometimes carries interesting scents. Toasting the wind, you stand on a cliff top, looking over the little village. Smoke from the chimney of the cock and magpie drifts straight upwards. As you watch, the smoke tilts. The sudden wind thins it to a pencil smudge, then nothing. The wind screams unexpectedly like a god cut in half. What a noise! It must be the caves around the island channeling the air. At least that's the most comforting explanation. Below you, the locals each take nips from a shared flask and make a toast towards the mainland. The winds are southerly. Interesting. Still. Hmm, question, can I see- Oh, yeah, I can't dive while at port. Can I see something now, though? Hmm. Well. Is there anything interesting? Nope, not really. Alright then. Let's head on. South. Actually. There's a large space just north of the Cuban Canal. Oh, hello. Beloved. Oh, get, get, nope, nope. I, I would rather you didn't, sir. I did this not out of malice, but because, I mean, you're there. Also, your name kind of creeps me out. Sorry. 
I'm just inherently suspicious of anything that calls itself the Beloved. You've defeated a Beloved. Or a Belovid. Anyway, a Oh, look, he's adorable. And I murdered him. Aw. Oh, well. A cloud of oily bubbles signals the beast's end. Its interminable refrain of moans and burbles and plaintive whis whistles finally dies away like a harmonium going down a drain. I mean, we have to dissect it for knowledge. Your bellies can wait. Easy now. Easy, easy blast. The carcass comes apart in the hauling lines before you even open the cargo hatch and the scatter of fleshy flotsam sinks in an instant. Surely you didn't do enough damage for it to disintegrate so completely. Uh, a failure. But, got ourselves a prepossessing mass. Suitable for smoking. You can probably preserve this to eat at your leisure. There's probably something horrible inside, but possibly there isn't. Edible, once roasted into submission, it will serve, but the smoke brings a kind of horror, a waking dream, a kinesthetic sense of vast things coiling and crushing... Lightless black. But we got an extra supply, so I mean, that's kind of worth it. Hi, how are you blocking my light? Oh. You're just a rock. That's fine. That's fine. That's nothing for me to worry about. Hmm. Nothing? Well, fair, I guess. Oh, really? Could you not? Let's go to the command canal. I got... Yeah, I got supplies to buy. I got fuel to use up. And other fun things to do. Hello. Hmm. Something brushes briefly against the shell. The zub shakes. Well... Something way too important. Okay, fair enough. Temperature changes abruptly. Your helmsman complains about goose bumps. And there we are. Oh, hey, there's a jelly flare. Hi, friend. You look delicious. So. Goodbye. The jillyfur. Is it a young jillyflish? There. A jillyflish. Really? No, no, no. The jillyfur. It's a young jilly... Is it a young jillyflish? I'm gonna keep making that mistake. A lesser subspecies? Do the dreams of jillyfish become real? In any case, now it's a sad slick of goo dissolving into the Z. Let it disperse. Watch its oil rainbow colors fade. A face that looks very like flourishing of years, the grand shrine face of visage. Something about the eyes... The sternness of the mouth. Perhaps only that it stares at the roof just as flourishing of years does. Now it dissolves. We gain a Z story. Useful. Very useful, in fact. And now a quick trip to the surface. Gather our information for our port report, of course. Surface gossip. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, only... Well, I'm going to be buying a ton of supplies anyway. So, moving on up. To Naples, of course. Still need to sell that... Oh. Looks like someone's, uh... Well. Farms and fantasies. In the vast expanse of the surface, without familiar echoes, your engine sounds strangely quiet. Your crew watches the white-walled farmhouses slip by. I could live there, one muses. Over there, grow olives or something. Raise a family. Oh, I come over a bit funny. Just gonna sit down a minute. He collapses to the deck, his eyes roll back in his head, and a last, long, sighing breath goes out of him. The surface is restful, but your crew may and will die here. The longer you spend, the more may die. That includes us. You can share news from below again. It's rather profitable. And a quick train ticket to Vienna. Now. Another favor for the agitator? The work proceeds, but you can help it proceed faster. I could, but first, establish a business relationship. The proud and glittering Café Fristel has long been a center of intellectual life, but its coffee has deteriorated in quality. Offer a sample to the melancholic proprietor. Ah. 
The proprietor's sorrowful expression vanishes. His eyebrows bristle. Even his ears seem to prick up. My friend, this is extraordinary. What flavors do I detect? Cinnamon? Jasmine? Is that back guano? The vitality of this substance, the energy. His enthusiasm dissipates abruptly. Yes, yes, I suppose it will do. I will pay you 80 Cronin, whatever that is in your peculiar subterranean currency, for every sack you bring me. Perhaps it'll do this poor old place some good. Anything's possible, I suppose. And now, gas lamps glow, waiters swoop, chess players hunch over their tables. The melancholic proprietor looks up from his mustache wax. Aha, he says gloomily. My only remaining friend. I, I'm glad you're not dead yet. Yes. Each day, the proprietor waves at the bustling blaze of the cafe. We draw a little nearer to bankruptcy. Your coffee helps delay our demise, if only by a week or two. I'm grateful, I suppose. Here, this is all I can afford to pay you. Still, 480 echoes. Not bad, not bad at all. And uh, another favor for the agitator. Over here, friend, the work proceeds, but you can help it proceed faster. One day, my friend, we will extinguish the sun, who is the king of all kings. But one step at a time, eh? One step at a time. What exactly do you plan? Back to Naples. You know! It occurs to me that... Sun the Skies is going to be a thing, right? And part of the little amount of information that we got on it said that the stars are going to be dying. I wonder if these anarchists will be succeeding. Hmm. Something to think about later. Anyway, I'm just going to go with 30 echoes. See you guys in just a moment, unless I start musing about something else. Eh, I decided 28 is enough. So, back to Avernus, and then return below. Very good, very good. Now, we do only have 10 barrels of fuel. That'll be more than enough, though, to get us back down to the Iron Republic. Can I just say I love my little sub-design? It's simply fantastic. I wonder if it actually changes if you get different ships. I assume it must, but how mu- oh. Scattered bones. Bones lay scattered and gnawed on the Z-bed. Rib cages yawn open, breast bones shattered. Fragments of skull litter the sand like pearls. Could scavenge them, or... I want to take a closer look at these bones. What killed these people? Don your diving gear. Many of the bones are blackened with cannon fire, others are scarred as though by swords or machetes. Scraps of tendon still cling, severed or cut, to broken fibula. A row of skulls bear round bullet holes between the eye sockets. Huh. I don't know then. I do not know. Also, whoa! Wow. Wow. Wow, that is a huge... Huge mine in this wreck ship. Hi. I would have words, and by have words, I mean just destroy your little ship here. Don't get me wrong, it's cute how you try, but, uh, well, it's not gonna do anything. I simply have a better ship. Oh, you're running away, though. That's cute. Goodbye. You defeated a wreck ship. There, it makes it... It makes a much more convincing wreck now you've finished with it. Could send a boarding party, which doesn't have very good chances of success. Hmm. Destroy them utterly. Perhaps they're still shamming. Perhaps you're in need of target practice. Perhaps you just haven't blown anything up in a while. And you know, I really haven't. There's no such thing as too sure. Whether or not they were playing dead, it's all moot now. There isn't much left. But you might be able to make some repairs using the smithereens. And besides, sometimes destruction is its own reward. You know, you got a fair point. Also, what's the deal with this thing? I wish to touch it. Because, I mean, just look at it. Unexploded, unclear bomb. A s 
A silk half covers a gleaming copper sphere, studded with spikes. A deep red light flickers continuously from within its central chamber. Your submarine lights fail and darken as they glance across the shell. A moment, please. Back at the end of our previous Sunless Sea playthrough, we saw something about unclear devices made by the anarchists. Is this... Is this like the prototype of those? Ah, yeah, scavenger mechanism from the device. It may come in useful. Be careful, though. You don your diving gear. Your ship's light falter when they fall in the sleeping bomb. Their beams unravel into feeble threads of luminosity, then dissipate. It's difficult working in the almost dark, but you manage to retrieve an intricacy of brass and glass and gleaming gold without offending the device. Inter oh, well, that was stupid of me. Still, so I can salvage stuff from those bombs? That's good to know. Why are they here, though? Huh. That is interesting. What exactly am I looking at there? Oh. Well, we're nearing the Iron Republic. That's a nice effect, actually. Kind of like how it's got the little... Muted... There we are. Muted sound to it. Oh. The man who was determined to steal the sun. This miscreant has cut his way through a bulkhead into the cargo hold and opened a mirror catch box. The box is empty now. He looks down at his feet. Sorry, Captain. It was so shiny. He cut his way through a bulkhead. What? Throw him in the brig. Make an example of him. Just desserts. You won't get your sunlight back, but at least you've shown who's in charge. Hmm. Interesting. I can actually make other uses for prisoners. Oh, and I know I can actually... I could probably sell them to, uh... Wisdom, couldn't I? Thoughts occur. None of them nice. Now, just a quick dock at the Iron Republic. Say hello. Compile a report. Gain two pages. Wonderful. Gain some, lose some. It's sort of the way of things here. And this business about the Cavalry Doctrine, which lets me buy more fuel. And I could buy more Dark Drop coffee beans here, which I might as well, because I mean, it's the cheapest I'm going to find them. It's going to be up to 30 fuel and 12 Dark Drop coffee beans. Now, before we end this... Hmm... You know, I wonder, what does the Dawn Machine look like beneath? Hmm. Hmm. I have questions. Many questions. Let's go a little bit stealthily. And I'm going to have to keep a... Good eye on this oxygen, because, I mean, well. Hey, fish. Boundling. What? Whoa, what are you? Could you not, sir? Could you not? Oh, look, there's something radiant behind me. So, what did I just kill? You've defeated a boundling. Its corpse is a mound of twisted metal and flesh. It's a mottled skin, further marred by the gaping rends inflicted by your weapons. Huh. Tear the cage from the boundling. The metal is strong and sturdy. You have need for it. A merciful end? Removing the cage is backbreaking work. Rods of steel run through the boundling's inflamed, swollen flesh. 
its body had warped to fit its cage, even its red eyes are distorted, pulled out of alignment by the bands across its face. Before carrying the reclaimed metal away, the engineer wipes frothy slime off it. She gestures to a stain. It'll take a bloody good sanding to get rid of this. Huh. That is interesting. Who keeps putting cages on creatures of the Z? I wonder, hello, you're something weird. A dawn fluke. I've seen lawn flukes before. Never a dawn fluke, though. Ooh. This might have been a bad choice. Okay, it didn't seem to affect our terror too much. It is doing damage, though. Oh my, is it doing damage. Fortunately, we are doing more. And I wonder what I'll get for dissecting you. Oh god, there's something else coming from behind me, isn't there? Yep, another boundling. Well, you know what? I think we're going to the surface after this. Pale light oozes from the ruined flesh of the fluke. Its amber spines are slowly liquefying into a gel. Luminescence spreads through the water as the dawn fluke dissipates. I mean, both of these are things I want to do. Send some of your crew to harvest the fluke. This fluke is particularly unusual. Its flesh may hold something of value. Away in the dark. You send your crew out into the dark. From the observation dome, you watch them become silhouettes against the light of the fluke. Its pale radiance grows in strength as the flesh sloughs away. It's like the last moments of a near-spent candle. In an instant, the Z is dark. As your crew turn to return, one fights to stay among the last of the luminescence. Your crew return without her. Went for my airline. Wasn't worth the risk. Gained a heart. Lost a crew. Fair enough. Also, we're going to the surface because fuck this place. Seriously. Okay, so that was highly damaging and dangerous. You know what? We're not going to go to the Dawn Machine right now. Apparently, the area around the Dawn Machine is a little bit dangerous. Who would have thought? We'll make a stop at the Grand Geode, though. And oof. Oof, that was a hit. That took nearly 290. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, guess we're staying on the surface for a little bit. At least I know nothing that dangerous lies on the surface. <laughs> yeah, we'll ignore that thing in the upper uh, left-hand corner there. Report, please. Thank you. And... Hmm. Yes. Next episode, it's a debate. Do we go further through the Unterzee? Or do we go further on the normal Z? We still have a lot of exploring to do. On both sides, actually. But for now, thank you for your time. Note the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below. Use them responsibly. And I shall see you all soon.